Hi there friends, uh, today I'm going to tackle a very serious subject on uh, anxiety and the worry from a Western perspective and I'm focusing on the West because uh, what I'm going to say applies mainly to the West. Uh, just a bit of a caveat, in the West, the majority of the countries, that is New Zealand, Australia, Canada, the United States to some extent, and the majority of Europe and the UK, they are givens, that is, things that we take for granted that the rest of the world do not enjoy. And maybe there are some other countries not in the West who have got the same advantages. I would think Japan, Korea, maybe part of China, uh, Russia is probably a great nation. They might have those. And those are, for instance, pensions. Like in many countries of the West, pension is a kind of universal. You don't have to have even work to get a pension. Everybody gets something. In New Zealand, I know, and probably in Australia, what we call superannuation, everybody gets something. And often I don't think even it is linked to how much time you have worked. Now, it's not a lot of money, but it is something nonetheless. It's better than nothing. Then we have other form of benefits, like unemployment benefits. So if I was to lose a job tomorrow, I can walk into the social office, whatever they call themselves, and they can give me enough money to just not starve or not sit on the street. Then we have a disability benefits, benefits. Same thing if you were to get injured at work, you can, you probably are covered with that. Then you have other sort of really uh, assistance available for you, like food banks, for instance. That's something you take for granted, but some countries don't have food banks. And uh, all sorts of other help you can get in the, within the Western societies. We have that. Medicals, yes, the United States is a bit expensive, but the rest of the country, the Western world, they have got sort of a, not socialism, sort of healthcare system, but it is heavily subsidized. So to see a GP, you probably paying under $100 which you would probably pay 300 if you didn't have a um, government subsidy. That's one example. Education, same thing. Um, in many countries in the West, at least a primary or elementary school, a high school, is almost or entirely free. You just have to worry about the college. But even the college, I think in Europe, most of colleges are kind of free for citizens. I know like Germany is very free or very cheap. So, but we also have like levels of unemployment that are very low in countries, in developing countries, unemployment can be in a two digit 20% or something like that. Over here, 4%, 5%, you know. So we have all these nice, things the system works basically the system works if i call the police now it doesn't matter whether i'm joking or serious obviously nobody does that but the police will be here within a few minutes if i have an injury and i need the ambulance the ambulance will be here within a minute if i need to get a passport I just fill in the forms and my passport will be here within weeks so the system kind of works and that should kind of give us some comfort that the rest of the world doesn't have. But unfortunately, what I'm seeing now is people are very worried. And we worry, I'm, I'm among those, I'm not a, like a holier than thou. I'm, I worry a lot about things I shouldn't worry about. But I often worry about, or we worry about retirement. And that could be like, 15 years away for my one for instance 15 years away and many things can happen between now and 15 years including god forbid not getting there you know but 15 years you could win a lottery you could get a better job with the aid the pensions could increase or decrease or be scrapped a lot of things can happen between now and 15 years but people 
in their 50s, they start to worry about retirement. In their 40s, they start to compare themselves with the average or whatever other statistics and they think they didn't have enough saved, they don't have enough houses, in, uh, all these sort of things people worry about. In actual fact, <clears throat> even those with the money are very worried. I do, or at least I used to listen to Dave Ramsey, the American guy who gives some financial advice on television or on YouTube. And it was sometimes normal uh, to hear a guy, uh, a couple, uh, calling in, or even a gentleman calling in saying, I have $2 million in my account or in my investments. I have paid my house fully. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I am worried. And I'm like, what is there to worry about? Like, $2 million, and you are 70 years old, even if you live all the way to 100 years old, which is 30 years, that's probably about 5,000 plus a month, if my math are correct, maybe 5.5 a month, and you are an old person, meaning you don't really, uh, you don't have a children to pay college for, etc., etc. That should be enough just even if it is not generating any income, you just, just put it in your under your mattress and they use it, even with the inflation. That's enough to last you 30 years without worrying at all. But on top of that, a million dollars invested, or two millions invested in a very cheap term deposit, say 2%, that's, I don't know, 3.3, 3, 3, 300, 3,000 plus a month. Now make it four, which is kind of um, I not ideal. That's that's pretty average. That's that's expected. Four percent. We're talking about six point plus six point six uh, in interest alone. You're not touching your million. Six point plus. That's more than enough to live off of as one person or a couple with no children. But they are worried, and and you wonder why would you be worried this way. But that's not the only persons, lots of people are worried. And as I said, with the, all the benefit we have, with all the safety net, I think we shouldn't be extremely worried up to that point. Now, if you, I grew up in a very poor village, I should say, people don't have a much. And they do worry about life in general, but the level of depression of worry we have here is even more than the level of worry they have back there. And um, I had the privilege to visit some other countries in Southeast Asia, particularly the Philippines and Thailand and Vietnam. And you go to a small city or small village, people don't have much, but they just chill. In actual fact, on uh, occasionally, when they get new visitors or whatever, or there's a birthday, they just have got a small old radio with the old cassette and just put old music and just dance, dance, dance as if tomorrow doesn't exist. And they live in poverty, but they're not worried. That's the difference. They, they hurt. It, it, it's, 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 I guess they get stressed also, but they, they don't seem to be is worried. They're just like, oh, okay, I don't, I don't have this, but God will provide, or it is what it is. They're very relaxed and very chill compared to how we are at the moment. Now, the reasons in the West can be multiple, but I think one of those is a sort of a comparing with your neighbors or, or following the journalists, as they say. I do remember reading a book by Alain de Botton. He's a British philosopher slash writer. He wrote a status, status, as a status anxiety, where um, particularly in America, people are worried about their neighbors. Like they're building better houses. They went to better schools. Their children have got better grades. And that comparison is a killer of joy in a sense. So I think that's one reason people get 
get a depressed. The other one is a sort of a consumerism where we want the best car, the best gadget. We still need to fly around even in our retirement, like chilling at home and around your city isn't good enough. You have to go to Hawaii now and then, you have to go to Disneyland, you have to go to Thailand at least twice a month uh, or a year. <laughs> And all that sort of inflated um, consumerism, inflated demand, inflated requirements of life make us very uh, stressed and very worried, even when we have got all we need to live off of for generations. So that's my take on this one. I do think we can stop that. We can um, rely on... And that's probably one thing we have just lost is relying on the ground, on a b b bigger power, on the God in particular for those uh, that in the past were religious. They do, they did rely on the fact that the God will provide. So they, God won't let them be alone or, or be too poor or what's not. So there was a bit of hope and faith in, in, in something bigger than them. But also keeping our life very simple, upgrading our lifestyle, uh, lowering our expectations. And looking at the rest of the world, they do live in an average lives and below average, and yet they can afford to smile, to help one another, to have a siesta on, in, the, in the middle of the week to go to church on Sunday instead of going to do your second or third job, etc., etc. So that's my take on this one. Obviously, it is therapy for me because I'm extremely a worrisome person and, and I worry about all sorts of things. But I think for most part, it's, it's just not called for. Okay, folks, if you've got any tips to reduce worry and pressure in your life, please leave them down below. Cheers. Bye.